going for the goal, attacking the basket, dropping times. The training and dedication by young athletes and families drive youth sports, an estimated $19 billion industry. Its sudden disappearance during the coronavirus pandemic hits hard. The youth sports industry alone was going to be losing somewhere between two and three billion dollars. Patrick Risch is the director of the sports business program at Washington University in St. Louis. He examined publicly available data and focused on the months covering the shutdown from COVID-19 through the end of summer. He also ran the numbers for all sports in the U.S., taking into consideration phases of reopenings and restrictions. The impact is at least, and that's a key phrase, at least $12 billion because it's $12 billion and climbing. We looked at several areas of the sports industry. We first looked at what's the impact on fan spending. That means tickets and food and beverage and other things that you would normally buy at the sports venues. And then of course you have the college athletics impact. Of that $12 billion ballpark figure, he estimates at least a $2.4 billion hit to the national economy from the loss of youth sports. And depending on what happens the many months ahead, he says the losses could more than double. Part of that is families traveling to various destinations across the country and spending money on restaurants and hotels and registration fees to get their kids in these tournaments. One St. Louis Metro organization was in the national spotlight when it was among the first in the country to reopen early, hosting a local youth baseball tournament in mid-May on Mother's Day weekend. Was the month of May too soon? While I love baseball, I love to watch baseball, I love to watch my children play baseball, I think it's too soon to put the most vulnerable, the potentially most vulnerable in positions where they could contract the, the virus. And I appreciate that they try to do all these social distancing techniques. It's just hard to do around these sorts of sporting events. Dr. Jason Newland is a pediatric infectious diseases physician at St. Louis Children's Hospital, and he's faculty at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis. I love sports, love to watch sports, and I love and I wanna see sports back as soon as we possibly can. Uh, in the meantime, I think it's, you know, these are our children and these are the loved ones that care for the children. Newland is part of a collaboration of medical experts from St. Louis Healthcare Systems rolling out recommendations for the return to sports in the St. Louis area. It's a collaboration between BJC Healthcare, SSM and Mercy, trying to uh, knowing that there's the pressure to get back into sports and because we have young athletes and they need some things to do as well. The clinical team of experts recommends a four phase approach to bringing back youth and high school sports with phase one no earlier than June 15th. Something that would be a phased in approach that takes into account what the disease level is occurring in our community. During phase one in June, social distancing of six feet apart is recommended, with workouts in each space limited to 10 individuals, including coaches. Every youth and high school sport is taken into consideration. Every sport has a plan of action under the categories of high frequency contact sports and low frequency contact sports. The plan takes into account a stable or downward trend of COVID-19 cases. Each of the four phases builds up the amount of interaction athletes may have with each other, eventually leading to local games and competitions. We continue to know cases and we'll let, allow a few more things happen or we'll recommend more things, a little bit less social distancing. During all phases from private and small group training, practices, sports camps to games and competitions, there is a list of recommendations, including health screenings before every activity, coaches and officials wearing masks, hand hygiene, disinfecting equipment and balls as much as possible, limitations on spectators with social distancing and face masks, and no more team huddles, handshakes, or fist bumps. Throughout this summertime, we want to promote social distancing as best as we can, realizing that, you know, in certain points, if we're having still low levels of cases, or, you know, if we got to no cases in the summer, which I don't think is going to happen, but if we got to that level, then we would say, okay, maybe we can, you know, do a little less. While it's been difficult for sports families not having their teams, knowing when and how to return isn't simple, as there are risks during a pandemic.
But Dr. Newland believes it's healthy for many kids to be active and return to sports if the spread of COVID-19 is under control. It's a balance. It's a difficult balance. And I think that's why this has been so hard for everybody because what is the right decision? And one could argue the only way you're going to know if it's the wrong decision is if something bad happens. And that's re- that put, makes these decisions a lot harder. And so one might say the easy thing to do is just let's not do anything until this thing is completely gone. But there's some significant negative consequences to doing that. And so I believe that by being thoughtful, understanding of the risks, thinking about who's at greatest risk and putting the things in place to limit the, the transmission will put us in the best position. We have to do it as a community, as a state, as a country. The more we do this together, the better off we will be in the end.